Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses a particular type of treatment for prostate cancer called high-intensity focused ultrasound, or HIFU. There are other modules available that provide an overview of prostate cancer and discuss other treatments in greater detail. It is hoped that you will have viewed the module entitled Understanding Prostate Cancer prior to this one. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as comprehensive as possible. However, it may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. Prostate cancer is the uncontrolled growth of gland cells in the prostate, a small gland just below the bladder that surrounds the urethra or urine channel. This common cancer is detected most commonly by the prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, blood test, and digital rectal exam, or DRE. The diagnosis of prostate cancer is confirmed by a biopsy, which allows doctors to look at the prostate cells under a microscope. The treatment for prostate cancer depends on the stage or extent of the disease, and different options may be considered for different stages of cancer. In general terms, prostate cancer may be considered localized or organ-confined when it is felt to be entirely contained within the borders of the prostate, locally advanced when there is suspicion or evidence it has escaped through the capsule of the prostate or into nearby structures, recurrent when it has previously been treated and then come back, and metastatic when it has spread to other parts of the body away from the prostate. There are typically a number of treatment options available for managing prostate cancer. The treatments recommended by a doctor will depend mainly on the stage and grade of a patient's cancer and the patient's general health and age. For early stage prostate cancer, the aim of treatment is cure. For later stage cancer, the aim of treatment is to extend life and help relieve symptoms. The standard treatments for prostate cancer include surgical removal of the entire prostate, radiation therapy using high-energy rays to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors, and active surveillance with possible delayed intervention, meaning that one is closely watched by a physician with regular exams and testing to check for cancer growth. One investigational treatment currently being tested for localized early-stage prostate cancer is high-intensity focused ultrasound, or HIFU. HIFU is presently not approved by the FDA in the United States, and most patients to date have been treated in Canada, Mexico, Russia, Australia, and Lebanon. This treatment is not as yet insured by any public or private health insurers. There are two commercially available HIFU machines, the Ablotherm machine and the Sonoblate 500. HIFU uses high-energy ultrasound waves focused on the prostate to produce intense heat, destroying prostate tissue inside a target zone without damaging surrounding tissue. In HIFU, ultrasound waves work like sun rays entering a magnifying glass to burn an object underneath. Sun rays enter the glass, intersect below the lens, and cause the object to burn at the point of their intersection. Similarly, HIFU uses something called a transducer to focus ultrasound waves at particular points on the prostate to kill cancerous tissue with heat. Just like a hand placed into the path of one sun ray away from the point of intersection is at no risk of harm, any surrounding tissue in the path of a HIFU ultrasound wave away from the point of focus is also not at risk. HIFU is generally reserved for the primary treatment of localized cancer, preferably with low to intermediate risk disease. Risk categories are explained in detail in a separate module entitled Understanding Prostate Cancer. Preferably, but not exclusively, the prostate should be small to medium sized, in other words, less than 30 to 50 grams. Having said this, HIFU can be used when there is localized extension of the disease that produces obstruction of the bladder or produces kidney disease from blockage of the tubes connecting the kidneys to the bladder. HIFU has also been used to treat cancer that reoccurs after radiation treatment. HIFU can also be used in patients that have positive margins after radical surgery and have a rising PSA. These patients need to have confirmation by biopsy that residual tumor remains and that the PSA is present or rising after radical surgery. As mentioned, HIFU is considered an emerging treatment option 
and is available only at select centers. Patients without a rectum from previous surgical removal or who have severe narrowing of the rectum that will not allow the insertion of a rectal probe are not candidates for HIFU. Stones dissipate the sound waves, thus preventing the energy of HIFU from causing coagulation of the prostate cancer tissue. Therefore, patients with significant calcification in the prostate are also not great candidates. Patients with severe bleeding problems may also not be suitable for HIFU, and those who are not fit enough for a general or spinal anesthetic also should not be considered for the procedure. Most men with prostate cancer will have been seen by a urologist, a surgeon who specializes in the urinary system and male reproductive system. This doctor will determine a patient's eligibility and suitability for HIFU and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the procedure. As noted, determining suitability for the procedure involves a review of your cancer risk, defined by grade, stage, and PSA level, as well as your prostate size and its appearance. Men with larger prostates and those with significant calcification in them may require an additional operation prior to HIFU. This surgery, called a transurethral resection of the prostate, commonly known as a TERP or Tupper, involves coring or channeling out of the prostate tissue to open up the urinary channel called the urethra. This is done to allow compression of the prostate in order to treat the anterior or top part of it to increase the efficiency of energy delivery and to decrease complications such as obstruction by the passage of tissue debris and infection. In some centers, particularly in Europe, this procedure is performed routinely prior to HIFU treatment under the same anesthetic, regardless of the size. When it's done for large prostates, it is done days or weeks before the procedure under a separate anesthetic. Having said this, in many centers, however, TURP, or TERP, is not routinely required at all centers. Following the initial evaluation, you will be asked to sign informed consent for the procedure. This is a very important document which indicates that you understand why the treatment is being performed, other treatment options, what surgery entails, and what the potential risks are. The consent allows your doctor to perform any other procedures that are deemed necessary to save your life and to use the assistance of other medical personnel, such as other doctors, nurses, and students. Prior to surgery, you may meet with an internist or an anesthesiologist to precisely determine your fitness for the procedure. This appointment may involve an interview, examination, blood tests, a cardiogram, and possibly other special tests. With all of this done, it is time to prepare for your procedure. In the days leading up to it, focus on living as healthy as you can, eating a balanced diet, and getting some regular exercise. Gathering the support of friends and family around you, as well as other patients who have had high food done, when possible, can help ease your mind and comfort you. Try to take other measures to reduce stress as well. Arrange time off work well ahead of time, and organize some help with household and other tasks before and after treatment. Learning about your condition and your therapy through programs like this can also help to relieve anxiety by removing the mystery of what is happening to you. Finally, it is important to understand and come to terms with the expectations of treatment as well as the potential outcomes. The night before the procedure, eat a light meal, then take nothing by mouth for several hours before surgery. A common instruction is to take nothing by mouth after midnight on the night before the operation. However, individual instructions may vary. You may be advised to perform a bowel prep the day before surgery, such as drinking a special fluid to clean out your bowels. Try to get a good night's sleep, as it helps to go into surgery well rested. Finally, as individual situations will differ, follow the advice of your doctor or hospital regarding specific preoperative instructions. On the day of surgery, have someone drive you to the hospital or clinic and try to arrive early. There will likely be some paperwork to be done on arrival. You will then be checked into the surgical area where you will change into a hospital gown and meet with a nurse. The nurse will review your medical history and check your vital signs, including your blood pressure, pulse, and temperature. An intravenous or IV line will likely be started, through which you will receive fluids and later medications. An enema is given in some centers where the bowel prep is not taken the day before. At some point during this process, you will meet with an anesthesiologist who will administer anesthetic drugs and monitor your vital functions during treatment. The anesthesiologist will review different anesthetic options with you 
and discuss their merits and potential risks. Finally, prior to beginning the procedure, you will meet once more with your surgeon and any final concerns can be addressed. Once in the operating or treatment room, an intravenous or IV line will be started if not done already. You will then be put to sleep by the anesthesiologist and a breathing tube will be introduced. Alternatively, you may be given freezing medication in your back which numbs the body from the waist down. Finally, you will be positioned on the operating table with your legs up in stirrups and your skin will be cleansed with an antibacterial solution. In the operating room, the patient is placed with his legs up in stirrups, as shown here. A catheter, or tube, is placed into the bladder, as shown here. In some centers, a second catheter, called a suprapubic catheter, may also be placed into the bladder through the skin of the lower abdomen. This tube helps with the TERP procedure, if performed, and also helps with voiding trials after HIFU when the urethral catheter comes out, acting as a safety valve and a way to determine how well one is emptying his bladder. This catheter is left in until good bladder emptying is demonstrated. An ultrasound probe, which is placed inside a latex balloon filled with cooling liquid and coated in gel, is then inserted into the patient's rectum. Multiple ultrasound images are taken, which the physician uses to locate the prostate and outline the area he or she wishes to treat. Then, 400 to 600 pulses of high-intensity focused ultrasound are delivered to the prostate, which is divided into multiple treatment zones. Exposure time of the tissue is short, usually less than one second, and the physician can immediately view the changes of the tissue to verify success. The entire procedure takes about two to three hours, depending on the size of the prostate. It is usually okay for the patient to eat supper the same day of the procedure. In most cases, no hospital stay is required following HIFU, and your doctor will advise you on this. Since it is important that a patient take it easy for a couple weeks after surgery, it may be a good idea to find someone to assist with daily activities. Many patients can resume most normal activities in less than a week. After surgery, some patients may experience temporary bruising and swelling. It is common to have difficulty urinating for one to two weeks after the procedure. Therefore, a catheter or tube, as mentioned, may be placed into the bladder as necessary. Your doctor will instruct you on how to use this catheter and a separate module is also available that discusses this. Antibiotics are usually given for a few days or more during this time to prevent the occurrence of a urinary tract infection. After the catheter is removed, patients may experience some mild discomfort and bleeding, as well as more frequent and more urgent urination. There may be a little bit of urine leakage and possibly some passage or sloughing of some dead prostate and urethral tissue debris. Most patients pass this tissue without any problems. Less than 1% of patients will experience a urinary tract infection after HIFU. The inability to urinate, called urinary retention, persists in about 3 to 5% of patients after the catheter is removed 3 to 7 days after surgery. This may require prolonged catheter drainage or even further procedures to relieve an obstructed urine channel or urethra. A small number of patients treated with HIFU will experience mild urinary incontinence or leakage. The number of patients reporting some urine leakage requiring the use of protective pads is about 5 to 15 percent. This is rarely severe and often resolves with time. Erectile dysfunction, or ED, the inability to have or maintain an erection adequate for intercourse, is a much more common side effect, occurring in 30 to 70 percent. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the nerves providing erections lie immediately next to the prostate, any treatment for prostate cancer runs the risk of damaging these nerves, and this is no exception with HIFU. ED is more likely with more complete treatment, and also more common in older men and in those with other risk factors for ED, such as smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, etc. Scarring of the bladder neck or urethra, called a stricture, occurs in 4 to 12 percent and results in blockage of the urinary stream, possibly to the point of not being able to urinate at all. This situation would require further surgery to relieve the blockage. Fistula formation, which is a hole connecting the urinary tract and the rectum, has been reported in the past. However, with advances in technology and technique, no fistulas have been reported with HIFU for primary treatment since 2003. There is still a risk of this happening, however, when HIFU is done after failed radiation therapy. Finally, pain in the perineum, the space between the scrotum and anus, which is worsened by sitting down, can persist for three to four months after HIFU in one to two percent. 
Follow-up visits after HIFU include regular visits to your doctor and PSA tests, typically every three months after treatment for the first year, every six months for another couple of years, and yearly thereafter. Individual situations may require different follow-up plans, and your doctor will outline your specific follow-up. Regardless, PSA levels should fall to almost zero and remain less than 1.0 nanograms per mil following HIFU. Follow-up biopsies or sampling of the prostate tissue may also be performed to confirm that treatment has been successful. If a biopsy shows residual cancer and or if the patient's PSA level rises, a second HIFU session or another prostate cancer treatment may be given, such as radiation therapy or surgery. A second HIFU procedure may also be required if the prostate is quite large. Studies have shown that one to two years after HIFU treatment, up to 93% of patients with localized prostate cancer are cancer-free. At three years after treatment, up to 84% of patients are cancer-free, and at five years after treatment, 78% of patients are cancer-free. Success rates vary depending on the stage and grade of cancer, PSA level, and the definition of success used in these studies. For many reasons, HIFU is highly attractive to some men as a minimally invasive treatment option for localized prostate cancer. It is a less stressful procedure than surgery and offers a good alternative for older or less fit patients. It does not require a cut into the skin. It can be performed on an outpatient basis. There is minimal pain afterwards, and the recovery is quick. HIFU can be repeated if necessary, and it can be used to treat patients with recurrent cancer after other treatments. While it is still not yet a standard treatment, short and medium-term results are promising. Because HIFU for prostate cancer is still a fairly new procedure, more long-term results are needed to evaluate its effectiveness compared to other treatments. Data is now available with up to 10 years follow-up. Results may vary with the skill and experience of the surgeon, and the incidence of serious side effects may be higher when HIFU is performed for recurrent cancer after other treatments such as radiation have failed. To summarize, HIFU is an investigational treatment for prostate cancer that uses ultrasound waves to heat and destroy prostate tissue. It is a short, simple outpatient procedure requiring anesthesia. An ultrasound probe is inserted into the rectum to target the prostate without harming surrounding tissue. Surgery only takes a couple hours. Patients may go home either the same or the next day, and they may return to normal activities fairly soon afterwards. HIFU is convenient and well-tolerated by most men, with a low chance of side effects. Possible risks of the procedure include swelling, difficulty urinating, incontinence, and erectile dysfunction. Short and medium-term results of HIFU are promising, and more research on its long-term efficacy is awaited at this time. These modern references were used to assist in the preparation of this module and are available for review on the Internet or through your local medical library should you wish to do more reading on this subject. These references were also used. These are just a few of many online resources available to educate you on prostate cancer and help you find support. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of high food treatment for prostate cancer. We wish you the best for the future and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.